Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Before I get started on today's video, I want to clarify something I said a few weeks ago, and that is that if you have a woodworking club or guild uh, and you're looking for a guest speaker on a Zoom meeting, uh, that if I'm available, I would be happy to do that for you. And a number of people have got in touch with me. We've already set up a, a few of these meetings. Uh, but the one question everybody asks is how much I charge for that. It's free. I don't charge anything for that. It's just my way of giving back to the woodworking community. So if you're interested in that, uh, get in touch with me and uh, we'll see if we can set something up. In the meantime, let's get on with this video. Now, I've been really lucky to work with some really good, talented woodworkers and carpenters over the years, and you kind of pick up little tips and tricks that they use, and some of them I've been using for so long I forget that I'm using them, uh, and I've developed some myself, some modifications along the way, so today I want to show you some of those because I think you'll get some benefit from it. So let's get started. Here's a tip that I've been using for a long time, uh, and I forget that I even do it anymore. And some of you have noticed it, but whenever I'm making lines, I make a line like this. And I've exaggerated that, but I put a little tick right near the end. And what that tells me is that this is the waist. This is the waist side of the board, and that I want to leave that line. And so my saw cut, is going to come right down there and that means that I will be leaving that line that I just drew. And you can do it on the other side too and it's it's really easy you just do the same thing but before you get to the end of the board I've got a knot down here I'm just going to move over. Before you get to the end of the board you stop Oops, do it again, stop, and you go like that. And you can see that was a, a smaller tick, but it's the same thing. That is the waist side of the cut, and you want to leave that line that you draw. So let's do another one there. So you go down like that, and there's what that looks like, and that's the waist side. And if you do that, you'll get absolutely perfect cuts every time because you will know which is the waist side, and that means that you would be leaving that line. And where it becomes really important is when somebody's handing you boards like they were to me, and they would draw a line with a carpenter's pencil, big thick line, and put a tick on it, and I would know that they want me to leave that line on there. Uh, and that would be the waste side of the wood, and that would give them a perfect cut. So a great little tip for getting accurate cuts every time. Now very often when I'm gluing boards together, I'll arrange them ahead of time however I want the grain to look. And in some cases, like this one here, I don't even have these edges jointed yet, but I may arrange some boards to see how they're going to look. Now when I'm gluing these together, I'm going to be taking these apart and jointing them, but I want to bring them back to the same way they are right now. So what I do with that is I use the side of a pencil and I just draw a mountain on there and I use the side to make a wide line just like that. And what that tells me, it doesn't matter how I take these and put them, run them through the joint or however I do them, when they come back they can only fit one way. Even if they're a little bit jointed in there. They're still going to fit one way so they're going to look like a little mountain. Now when you, before you glue these up or even after you glue these up, um, best to do it before. Um, you can take an eraser and get rid of these, but look, you can also use rubbing alcohol. It works like a charm. Ordinary rubbing alcohol uh, will get rid of those um, graphite lines on there um, just that easily. You can see how that's all just disappearing there if I keep working at it. Uh, and the, of course the alcohol is just going to evaporate off of there and it's all ready to glue or to joint. Here's a common trick that woodworkers use to get a better finish on their product. 
Now, many of you already know that I use water-soluble stains, and a lot of people freak out when I say that I use water because it raises the grain, and it does raise the grain. But look, even if you're using oil-based uh, finishes, you can still raise the grain with water, and a lot of woodworkers do that. And what they do is get a damp cloth. It, you don't want it really sopping wet so that the fish can swim across it. Um, it just needs to be a light, damp, um, surface coating on there and then you just what you do is you let it sit but the key is that you need to make sure that you let it sit and dry hard because it's going to raise the fibers on the grain and then when that does when it raises the fiber on the grains then you can do a couple of things sometimes I'll use um, about a 400 grit sandpaper and I'll just lightly go over it maybe two passes at the most uh, the other thing that I often do and this is something an un unsung uh, special little tool in the workshop that gets very little attention and that's a scraper and a scraper is perfect for knocking off the tops of those little nubs those little hairs that stick up and you will be astounded uh, the quality of finish that you can get when you do that and I will often put water on and raise the grain before I put the dye on because after I put the dye on it's already been raised once it will raise again a little bit the second time uh, but not nearly as much and it just uh, very quick uh, one or two passes and um, once in a while I'll use the scraper after I've used the dye but usually just some sandpaper. So what we're looking at here is three different combinations of wood and what I want you to see and I've made these demos so that it you can see that is you can see this is a light on light this is a dark on dark and this is a light on dark and what I want you to look at what I emphasized is the connection here the the joint connection and you'll notice that when you're working with light wood and you're going to finish it light your joints you need to pay particular attention to your joints because they stand out from across the room if you make a, a mistake on a joint when the wood is white um, you will see that forever on dark, look at the difference. You can see it's basically the same. I tried to get these exactly the same gap, but look at this because it's dark on dark. You and and right now you're going to be seeing that joint in there because you're looking at it. Um, but it, it, when you start looking at furniture, you're not going to see that gap. And look at here's a combination we don't often use, and we should be using more. This is a great combination where you have white and dark together. Uh, and look at that joint just absolutely disappears in fact uh, this is actually the worst joint here if you were to look really close at these uh, this is actually slightly slightly the worst joint but it shows up the least because the darkness is hiding so whenever you're making joints pay attention to what the last finish is that you're going to put on this and that's why we when we're making furniture we always think ahead about what this is going to look like when it's done um, and I'm not suggesting that you need to use dark stains or dark dyes um, to, for all of your projects but I just want you to see that when you are using light colors yeah, you need to pay a little bit more attention to making sure your joints are as tight as they possibly can be. Now here's a little trick that I developed. Now when you've got legs, for example, maybe you've got legs for a table that you're working on and you know you twist them around to set them up however you want so the nice edge is showing. Uh, and then what I will do normally is I would go one, two, three, four. Now that's what I used to do uh, and you can see what that looks like. Now the problem with that of course is that after you've worked on the legs and maybe you've tapered them and they've been away from this angle for a while sometimes you forget whether it was whether you were going one two three four um, you know you never know don't always know which you know for the one you never know which one was right there and am I looking at them from the back or from the front whatever look at this this is something I developed not long ago and it just it works perfect every time you go like this, you go one, 
two, three, and you can never ever get those mixed up. It doesn't matter how you ever switch them around, whatever it is, they always come together in exactly the same way. And there it is there. One, two, three, four. So you always know where the front is, the sides, and the back. Just a perfect way of marking where you want your legs to be. Well, that concludes my video for today. Uh, and don't forget, there's a full article on that, always with these videos on Woodwork Web. And uh, you can get more detail there if you want. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.